Welcome to another Studio tutorial. In this video we're going to talk about the z-index, which is the stacking order of overlapping elements. z-index is often used when elements have absolute positions, but can also be used with relative position when margins are set to negative to create a 3D or overlapping effect. In this example we have three items set with absolute position, and below we have three items set as relative position. So let's click into here and see how we can change the stacking order. As you can see, this is absolute position, so we can move these around however we'd like. And if we want this blue element to be on top of the others, for example, we can come over here into Z-index, and elements stack in order from the highest number to the lowest number. For example, these are all set to 1, so if I set one of these to 2, this one is going to overlap the others. Now because this is a 2, I can grab this box, and I can change this to a 3, and now that stacks above. If I want to make sure this stays at the very bottom, I can drag this down to negative 3, and that will be below all the other elements. So this is how z-index works with the stacking order, and as you can see we can use this with relative positions as well. To create this overlapping effect, we use negative margins here, and just to show you, I'm going to add a positive 20 pixels here, just to show you how those margins work. So this is relative position, but now I can do the same thing. I want this item to be above these others, so I can change the z-index value to 1 because these others are set to 0. Now if you look at this web page example, we have two circles here that I added using absolute position to create a nice colored bubble effect. And it's looking really nice, but it's overlapping this text. So if I want to change this, I can grab this purple circle, for example, and I can just change this to negative 1 to ensure that that's behind all the other elements in this parent element. Now I can grab this circle, and I can do the same thing, but this time I'm going to make this negative 2 to sit behind this other circle. And I can still move this around, and the layering position is going to depend on the z-index value. So now that we've created that, let's take a look at how this looks. And I'll say that's looking pretty good. Now there's another place we can use this. And so if we double click on this box, for example, we have a box that contains all of these elements. And this is set to relative position, as we can see here. And it has a margin right now of 30 pixels. So I can bring this down, and it shows 0 pixels right now. I'm going to set this margin here at the top to negative 100. And now we can see that it is set to 0, and it's overlapping this other element. But if we change the z-index here to negative 1, it's going to sit behind. And if we want to guarantee that this is going to sit above all the other elements, let's just set this to 1. And as we resize our browser, we can see these really nice overlapping elements in the order that we set. And that's how to use the z-index value to change the stacking order of your overlapping elements.